Hi, welcome to my video on the structure of Earth and tectonic plates. If you've ever looked at a physiographic map of the Earth, you might have noticed that Earth is divided into both continents, where we live, and then deeper ocean basins, where fish and sharks live. And although we take this for granted, that we live on the continent and we go to the beach to get to the edge of the ocean, if you stop and think about it, why does this make sense? We know all of Earth is made of rock, so there must be rock beneath the oceans and rock beneath the continents. So why are the continents sticking above sea level and the floor of the ocean is sitting below sea level? The answer is that both continents and ocean basins are both made of tectonic plates that are essentially floating in Earth's mantle. This is very analogous to how an iceberg might float in the ocean. You may see the tip of the iceberg just above the surface, but it masks a much larger body of ice, or in this case rock, floating below the surface. So what's the deal? If everything's made of rock, why are continents floating so much higher than the ocean basins? And to understand this, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the structure of Earth. What does Earth look like beneath the surface? And we'll see that it's divided into an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, and then the lithospheric plates that we live on. And then the second part of the video, we'll look in a little more depth at the structure of those lithospheric or tectonic plates. And I'll show you that they're made of a combination of two things, of mantle lithosphere and of crust. So this is what Earth looks like from the surface where we live all the way down into the core. It's almost 6,400 kilometers in radius. It's a big, big rock floating in space. And we can divide it uh, into three or four or five divisions. Um, the lowest division is called the inner core. 1,200 kilometers thick, made mostly of solid iron. How do we even know this exists? We've certainly never been there, and we don't even have a sample of it. We know the inner core exists because it's required by uh, modeling of gravity on the surface of the Earth, and it's also required by the behavior of seismic waves as they pass through the interior of Earth. Moving upwards, we have the outer core. It's also made of iron, but in this case, it's liquid iron. And we know that for one reason, because as seismic waves pass through the interior of the Earth, certain types of seismic waves can't pass through liquids. So we see a shadow for waves that are emitted on one side of the Earth, and they actually don't appear on the other side because they're blocked by this liquid iron core. We do have some sense of what this might look like. We don't have any samples of our own outer core, but we do have meteorites that have fallen to Earth. This is an example of palisite. It's actually a piece of pure iron nickel alloy with huge olivine crystals embedded in it. And people interpret this as being essentially the core mantle boundary from another planet that was smashed to smithereens in outer space and a piece of the core mantle boundary fell down to Earth. So we think this is what our own core mantle boundary might look like liquid iron with a mush of olivine crystals in it. Moving upwards and getting more relevant to our own lives is the mantle. The mantle is very different from the core. Namely, it is a silicate rock. So it's something that we might be familiar with seeing on Earth. Um, it's actually a hard rock. It's rich in iron and magnesium. Uh, and the name of the rock is peridotite. That's the actual type of rock, and it tends to be dominated by olivine and pyroxene minerals. So here's an example of it. Uh, these green pieces are pieces of peridotite that were actually erupted by a volcano and are thus embedded in a matrix of basalt rock. So these are essentially hand samples that came up through the plumbing of a volcano and were erupted onto Earth. So that volcano basically sampled pieces of the mantle for us. And you can see it's made of this green peridotite rock. 
Now the mantle can be divided into three parts. Um, the uppermost part of the mantle, right here in dark red, is called the lithospheric mantle. It's a part of the mantle that has cooled because it's close to the surface and essentially behaves as a rigid solid. Below that is what we would call the asthenosphere. Um, and then below that is the lower mantle. Both the asthenosphere and the lower mantle are also made of peridotite rock, but the difference is that they can actually flow over time. This is a very difficult concept, but it's true. A silicate rock that actually flows like a liquid over time, rising and sinking in a circular fashion within the mantle. And that's in contrast to the lithospheric mantle, where it's the exact same rock, but because it's colder, it actually behaves as a solid. And then finally, sitting above the mantle is what we call the crust. And we can divide the crust into two flavors, oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust tends to be thin, maybe five to 10 kilometers thick, it tends to be mafic, which means it's high in iron and magnesium, and it tends to be dense. Oceanic crust, by definition, is made of basalt rock, and we'll talk more about that later. Now, in contrast, continental crust is very thick. It tends to be felsic, which means it's low in iron magnesium, and it tends to be light or buoyant. It's impossible to generalize about continental crust. It's made of a whole variety of rock types, everything from granite to sandstone to schist. But in general, those rock types tend to be lighter than basalt, which makes continental crust a bit more buoyant. And here's that illustrated. Here's your thick, buoyant continental crust and your thin, dense oceanic crust. Now that you know the basic structure of Earth, let's zoom in and talk about this uppermost piece that actually comprises a tectonic plate. And this uppermost piece is called the lithosphere. And it's essentially the lithosphere that makes up rigid tectonic plates. And this is a little confusing, because you have to pay close attention. The lithosphere is a term that groups both the crust and the lithospheric mantle. Okay. So the lithosphere includes both the crust and the lithospheric mantle together. And the reason we group those together is because they both behave as a single mechanically rigid tectonic plate that floats in the more ductile asthenospheric mantle below. So essentially, although the, the crust and the lithospheric mantle are quite different compositionally, they both are very similar mechanically. They both behave in a rigid way, which allows them to act as a tectonic plate. But it's important to, to remember that despite acting as a single rigid plate, they actually maintain strong compositional differences between the crust and the lithospheric mantle. They're not the same. They just behave the same way when push comes to shove. So finally, um, returning to our original question of ocean basins versus continents, co because continental lithosphere tends to be thicker and more buoyant, it floats higher than the thinner and more dense oceanic lithosphere. And so this is what gives root to the fact that, we that continents float above the water level and ocean lithosphere floats below the water level. It's because they are fundamentally different, and we'll talk about how they form in later videos. And I'll finish with an example, which is the Himalaya. Mount Everest, of course, is the highest point on Earth, and that's not a coincidence. These high mountains like Everest are being held up because they are part of a very thick continental crust, which makes for a very buoyant continental lithosphere and allows this big Himalaya mountain range to float high above sea level. Thanks for listening. Hopefully, 
by going back through this video and taking close notes, you should be able to answer these two questions. What are the two main parts of the lithosphere and how are they different? And also, what key property distinguishes the lithosphere from the underlying mantle? Thanks a lot.